Good evening. I'd uh, like to welcome Associate Pastor David Ford from the Community of Church Christ, who will lead us in our invocation. Almighty Father, it's, uh, I invite your spirit to be here this evening, Father, and to preside with the mayor and the city council members as they preside over the business of this agenda. I pray that that spirit be with them, Father, in uh, patience and in wisdom and expediency as they deal with the agenda, the business of this, the city of Milton, its businesses and its private citizens. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Milton City Council for February 1st, 2010 to order. Will the city clerk please call the roll and make general announcements. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I will be happy to call roll for the February 1st, 2010 regular meeting. However, I would like to remind those in attendance to please silence all cell phones at this time. Additionally, those attending the meeting who would like to provide public comment either during the public hearing or during the call for public comment, you are required to complete a public comment card prior to speaking on an item. There is no public comment for consent agenda items or items under first presentation. Those called to speak will be taken in the order that the speaker cards were received by the city clerk staff prior to the beginning of tonight's meeting. All speakers will identify themselves by name, address, and organization if applicable. When you hear the bell, you have 30 seconds to complete your remarks. The City Council may allow public comment on either an agenda item or general public comment from a representative of such an organized group or association, provided, however, that such an individual shall file a notarized affidavit that they have the authority to speak on behalf of said organization on a form provided by the City Clerk prior to the agenda item being called. Demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited, so please refrain from any applause, cheering, booing, outbursts, or dialogue with any person speaking. Please show the same respect to the person speaking that you will ex expect to receive yourself. Anyone in violation will be asked to leave. As I call roll, please confirm your attendance. Mayor Joe Lockwood? Here. Council Member Karen Thurman? Here. Council Member Julie Zahner Bailey? Here. Council Member Bill Luss? Here. Council Member Bert Hewitt? Here. Council Member Joe Longoria is attending a prior out of town business commitment and will not be with us tonight. Council Member Alan Tart? Here. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, good evening. I welcome everyone here tonight. And at this point, will the city clerk please call the first item. Next item is approval of meeting agenda. This is agenda item number 10-1042. Okay, do we have any uh, changes or other items to add to this agenda? Mayor, I'd like to add executive session to discuss land acquisition. Okay, do I have a motion and a second? Mayor, I move to approve the meeting agenda um, as recommended by staff. I'll second it. A motion by Councilmember Tark, second by Councilmember Thurman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Next item is public comment. Public comment is a time for citizens to share information with the mayor and the city council and to provide input and opinions on any matter that is not scheduled for its own public for its own public hearing during today's meeting. There's no discussion on items on the consent agenda or first presentation for the public or from council. Each citizen who chooses to participate in public comment must fill out a complete a comment card and submit it to the city clerk. Please remember this is not a time to engage the mayor or members of council in conversation. When your name is called, please come forward and speak into the microphone stating your name and address for the record. You'll have five minutes for remarks. City Clerk, do we have any public comment? No public comment, sir. Okay, let's move on to the consent agenda. Will the City Clerk please down the items? The first item is approval of the January 6, 2010 regular meeting minutes, agenda item number 10-1043. Second item is approval of the January 11, 2010 work session minutes. This is agenda item number 10-1044. Clerk, do I have a motion and a second? Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the consent agenda as written. 
I'll second the motion. I have a motion by Council Member Lost, second by Council Member Hewitt to approve the meeting agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Okay, there's no items under reports and presentations. Uh, first presentation, public hearing, zoning agenda, or unfinished business. So we're going to move on to new business. Uh, Chris, I know you wanted to. Do you want to wait till on staff reports? Do you want to talk about something? Um, yeah, I'll wait till staff reports. Or do you want I've, to got do? A, yeah. I've got a list of things here. Yeah, staff reports. Okay, well. okay. Will the city clerk, please sign the items. Approval of a resolution adopting the City of Milton Parks and Recreation Assessment Plan and Pattern Book for use by the City of Milton Parks and Recreation Department. Presented by Cindy Bonacci, Parks and Recreation Director. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, as you are aware, the City of Milton completed a Park and Recreation Assessment Plan over the past year uh, with a contracted firm of EDAW. Um, the presentation was made to Mayor and Council at the December 14th work session. Um, at this point, we are ready to move forward with acknowledging um, the documents that were created by EDAW, which is the Parks and Recreation Assessment Plan and the Pattern Book, uh, to acknowledge those to serve as future guides as we move forward with uh, parks and recreation initiatives here in Milton. Do we have any questions for staff on this? Ms. Julie? Thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you. It's very nice to have you at the table. Thank you. Um, just one quick question. If you can just confirm whether the Design Review Board had reviewed the pattern book. Um, and I guess the other was just to discuss whether or not going forward, um, as the assessments and the park surveys, et cetera, come forward, if this pattern book can continue to have more details and if it can be modified as needed. Okay. Uh, I'm not aware uh, if the Design Review Board has reviewed the pattern book yet. Um, we are not, by adopting <coughs> these documents, we're not adopting a specific design yet. These are just kind of some ideas that were um, recognized by citizens to be acceptable um, for for future site furnishings and such in the parks as we move forward. Um, you know, if we need to go about that process, I think we can. But because we're not recommending a specific design yet, um, that may not be necessary. And, and that was kind of my sense, but I wanted to make sure that I understood that correctly. So thank you for that input. Um, just a suggestion that especially because this is of a general nature, right. I'm assuming that as you guys continue down that path of surveys, but then also getting more specific about part of design, mm -hmm. maybe that's land specific or area specific, um, just a suggestion would be to ensure that we do indeed go down that path of getting specific with the designs as we've done freeing some of our overlays. Yes. Um, and that at whatever time we decide to bring that forward, if, if we would make sure to engage our design review board. Yes, absolutely. Are there any other questions? Okay. If I have no more questions, or I have a motion or a second. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve agenda item number 10-1045, approval of a resolution adopting the City of Milton Parks and Recreation Assessment Plan and Pattern Book. I'll used second. by the City of Milton Parks and Recreation Department. I'll second the motion. I have a motion by Councilmember Thurman. Second. Councilmember Hewitt, Hewitt uh, is there any other council discussion on this before we vote? Okay, hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass unanimous. Okay, will the city clerk please sound the first item. Approval of a contract between the City of Milton and the Shapiro Group, Inc. for the Parks and Recreation Needs Assessment and Related Work. This is agenda item number 09-1047, presented by Cindy Bonacci, Parks and Recreation Director. Okay, Cindy. Hi, it's me again. Um, I kind of went over the gist of how we got to this point at the last council meeting um, during staff reports um, and uh, alluded to the fact that the next step was to actually award a contract to a firm to complete the needs assessment survey. Uh, we have indeed reached that point. Um, just to remind you, we uh, had three firms reply to our RFP that went out um, at the end of 2009. 
um, the lowest bidder, um, the lowest qualified bidder that responded was the Shapiro Group. And uh, the recommendation is to move forward with the Shapiro Group for a contract fixed price of $16,400 with assumed postage costs, uh, including a 25% return uh, in responses of $3,400. Okay. Do I have any questions for uh, our Parks Director on this? Julie? Uh, thank you, Mayor. And I had sent um, a couple of questions um, to our city manager. Um, these may have already been addressed, uh, but just looking at the contract, it seemed that maybe our city attorney had not reviewed it. Again, that's for you guys to make that determination just because it's a contract. And I wasn't sure if my questions may have already been incorporated. You guys, again, may have resolved this or talked about it. Um, knowing that there was an initial request for proposal that went out, an initial response, and that, of course, I think that that Exhibit B2 captured some of the modifications, I just wanted to make sure that in that B attachment that were specific enough that we didn't have anything that could be misunderstood at, at such time that we had that contract to, um, to oversee. So just on page three, I know that initially we talked about a sample of the 11500 Of course, it now says all households. Right. Um, I guess my question is just to make sure that the contract is clear, that whether it be 11005 or some other number, that that's covered. Yes. Okay. Um, to get back to the first part of your question, the initial document that you had in your packets was a draft. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to go ahead and provide you with a draft as we move forward with getting a uh, legal review of the contract. Uh, the document that's provided for you tonight is the approved copy that has been reviewed okay. uh, by the city attorney. And um, some of those questions that I believe you had were addressed during the review process. Um, the clarification of the 11500 again, that is kind of a, a ballpark estimate that we're recognizing. Uh, as we go through this process, once we get the address list, mm -hmm. uh, that number will fluctuate a little up, maybe a little down, but that was kind of the, the raw number that we wanted to work with in right. getting a comparable cost estimate. But either way, Shapiro, whether it came in at 11575 they're prepared to send to all households. Correct. And, and Mr. Um, Gerard, can you just confirm if you got, I know you were working to confirm whether or not you received <coughs> it. Well, I was just checking with, with, with Chris. A lot of times what will happen is, is these will go to different attorneys other than me, and yeah. apparently Paul Higby out of my office did, in yes, fact, right. review it, and if he did, I will stand behind it. So yes. if you have any specific questions or want me to look at specific language, I will I'll answer that. I can clear that up as well. I mean, we, uh, um, with all, all contracts, especially those that relate to purchasing, we paid a long time ago for kind of a standard purchasing right. contract, which really saves us money in the long run that we don't, start at a blank slate and say, okay, now, Mr. Absolutely. Attorney, wrap a contract around this. That's why you'll see that what came out as a first draft was kind of our in-the-can contract. Yes. Um, and then when it goes back to the lawyer, what it gets is a cursory review just to make sure that there's nothing specific to this contract. Um, but, yes, I want you to know the contracts do get reviewed. But, no, we don't start from nothing every time, which not. is why there's a couple of different uh, um, renditions here. But this, this version that you are seeing did get a, a full and thorough legal review. Um, thank, and just on page 20, again, Chris, I'm just going through the questions that I posed. On scope of service, it makes reference to the questions that I know that, um, Ms. I want to make sure, Cindy, I pronounce your last name correctly. Bonacci. Bonacci. Um, that Mrs. Bonacci had made reference to the fact at our last review that, um, obviously, yourself, um, the Parks and Rec Committee, can you just clarify whether or not the council and mayor would have a chance to see those before they're finalized? Would, would we have a chance to provide any input? I know that you guys are driving that process. It just didn't make reference to that. We are starting our initial meetings with the firm this week. Mm -hmm. um, I have already provided a copy of the draft set of survey questions to the firm uh, for review so that when they come for our meeting on Wednesday, they're ready to go with uh, reviewing those questions and making recommendations. Uh, the draft set of questions that we currently have in place was drafted by staff and by the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Um, once the Shapiro Group comes on board and modifies those questions for appropriate language, appropriate order, uh, appropriate format and layout, uh, you know, my goal is to have them reviewed once again by the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Uh, should there be a need to have council review those before they go out, I'm happy to 
entertain that or address that if need I just, be? I know that obviously it's important for all of our constituents and um, I, I suspect that you guys will have all the questions and it'll be just as it needs to be. I know in, in the past some of those surveys we've at least had that opportunity before it's mailed out to all households to at least collectively as a body take a look at it and provide any input or, or pose any questions. I mean, I can find, if, if, if you all want to us to add that in here, we, we can. I mean, and I guess I'll look for kind of the direction of the council um, to, to add that or, or not. Um, Mr. Mayor, I guess. You know, I would really like just to hear what staff's recommendation, maybe Ken may have some input on that or not. I'm not that would be fine. And certainly you could, you could approve it with those contingencies put in it that they would have the flexibility to add that later uh, if they need to. So. Was that any, neg any negative to that? It's just all, I mean, when you start to do these kind of surveys, it's, it's, it's timing. Um, anytime we add a layer, it, the, the timing yeah. becomes longer. Um, and just as long as we manage the expectations that you're not looking for a deliverable by a certain date and we don't get there, um, which is what's great about these public meetings is we get to, you know, disclose those things. But if, if you certainly want the opportunity to review it, I, you know, we I will give you that personal, opportunity. My personal opinion is we've got professional staff and, and you know, paying professional consultant to do it. I, I would be fine doing that if you think it would delay the timing of it, because uh, I think the time delivery is, is important too. But that's my personal opinion. And Mayor, if I could just comment, obviously I would never want to delay the process. Um, just to be consistent, though, with the past when we've had an opportunity to at least review it. Um, sometimes this body might pick up an edit. I know that Councilmember Lusk is very good at identifying edits, as is um, Councilmember Tart or somebody else. And I think, again, uh, because last meeting it was noted that this is probably one of the key elements um, coming from the city, and given that we helped to represent that city, um, I, I can't imagine that it wouldn't be appropriate for us to at least review those questions before they're mailed to every household in the city. And so with that, of course, I would want us to be in concert with that timeline. Uh, it just seems it would be consistent with what we've done in the past for surveys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mayor? Um, personally, I wouldn't mind seeing the questions before other people get them in their mailbox in case somebody comes to us with questions. But at the same time, I feel like we've got you and we've got a parks committee that we're supposedly empowered to do this. And I would be very hesitant to make any changes whatsoever to the questions that are presented. So, I mean, I don't feel like I need to approve them or anything. I don't need that time. I just would like to see them so that if anyone has a question, I've seen them. Would an email draft? I, I, would, I would recommend that. And, and then that way, if there is something glaring to uh, both council members' points, um, it kind of hits the middle. If there's something glaring wrong or whatever, um, somebody can address it real quick. Okay. But, uh, not to add another layer. So if that's okay with okay. staff and the rest of the council, sure. they have you copy us on an email. And, uh, so we won't necessarily entertain a modification of the contract, but administratively we'll, we will email you a copy of the questions Correct. prior and to uh, distribution. wrong, red, red flag. And, and again, just to clarify, it's not about wrong or not, and, and I would hope, maybe this is another subset to that, would be um, obviously we've got some new staff on board, and hopefully subsequent to those questions being finalized, Maybe we can also just separately make sure that all documents that are part of kind of that history of things that you'll be reviewing to ensure that staff has that since we've had a transition between CH and now um, new staff members, just to ensure that that has been transferred because that would only, I think, be fair to you guys um, in, in your new roles. So that would be also part of the process. Sure. Okay. okay. Any other questions, Bill? It's, uh, just to show my ignorance in this type of contract. I have a question in Article 3B in the, uh, the, final one. the second sentence says the total includes the creation and mailing 11,500 surveys, the return of 25% of those. And that's the question that I have. Are they guaranteeing that we're going to get a 25% response? Is that what you're saying? What they're expecting is up to a 25% response. That's kind of the expectation. Um, it could be as low as 5% or as high as 25%, somewhere in that range. So when they came back with a cost estimate, uh, they based their postage costs on mailing the initial mailing out and then allowed for a 25% return, which gave us a number for the postage costs. Um, obviously, we've talked with Shapiro and anything above 25% we would probably address uh, based on a 23 cents per
per return kind of thing. And it would need to be significantly above the 25% before any additional costs were in incurred. As well as if the response is 15%, obviously our postage costs would be reduced based on less than a 25% return. And 25% is a pretty good return, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. But for something like this that yeah. is well, historic I, I, and everybody wants to have input well, in, I, I think 25% is realistic. I guess what I would say is if, if if we had a 50% return or whatever, we'd probably be glad to address that with them, yeah. and it would be a good, uh, you know, a good problem to have. Yes. Yeah. So the variable is just the postage. They're not going to charge us right. if they get a 50% return, and I got to charge us more for looking over that many surveys. No, the fixed price is that fixed. Um, the only fluctuating cost will be anything significantly over or under 25% return. Okay. Nothing else, Julie? Necessarily, they're going to do it for nothing if they right. <laughs> don't reach 25 percent. I do have Julie. Too. Yes, sir. I had just a few to follow up. Um, I know that we had talked about incentives, and I know that this contemplates some incentives. It just wasn't specific in the contract in terms of whether or not that would be managed internally and or whether or not Shapiro would help to do that. That is something we're going to address when we meet on Wednesday. Okay. Um, because these are profession professionals in the field, um, I want to get their input on how incentives work. Uh, do incentives affect your return? Uh, are incentives viewed as swaying responses? You know, uh, look at all of those sure. questions that people may have when you include incentives to make sure that the city is comfortable either not including an incentive or including an incentive and what that incentive might be that's going to be fair and unbiased as we collect and receive sure. the data. And I know that they reference in their materials that, of course, they've done that in some cases. Yes. I know you have as well. Yes. Um, my, my point was more that if you collectively decide to do that, would this cost cover their provision? And I'm assuming that you guys will work that out, but that's why I bring it up in terms of the additional labor hours to handle right. that and or professional hours. Right. As of right now, there's not an incentive included in their fixed price. Okay. So if that were to be included, it could it could vary? It could fall price. outside the contract price okay. or it could fall on staff or the city to incur any oh, cost yeah. that would be to, to recruit and seek out those incentives. Um, hopefully if we do some type of incentive program, we would, you know, solicit um, donations uh, from the community and such that would right. help fill that void. So in yeah. essence, staff could probably help yes. to manage that. Yes. Um, and then in terms of the timeline, again, just going back to the difference between the draft and what became our exhibit uh, B1 and part two, mm -hmm. on the timeline, is it fair to say that that timeline also is adjusted for any of those modifications, i.e. total households versus a sampling? The timeline is still relatively the same. The 12 weeks is still the goal of the entire project from the time uh, we begin finalizing the draft set of questions to the time it goes out okay. till, till you get your presentation, which should be sometime around mid to late May. And, and it may be again after Wednesday, you may have some specifics that you would modify. And yes. If so, maybe we just specify that that attachment ties to um, either the draft or that final, just so we're clear what we're yes. holding them accountable for. Um, and then in terms of the, the length of time to return, obviously we don't know yet when it will be mailed. Mm -hmm. Just a consideration if we can make sure that we don't mail during a period of time, either when Fulton County schools are on right. spring break as an example. Because right. looking at that calendar, and, and I suspect that you right. know to look for that, but since you're new to Fulton County, yes. those dates may not be something <laughs> that you have um, handy. Our, our goal right now is to, to complete the, the instrument, get the survey ready, and, and to have it out and available as early as the end of this month, sure. early March maybe, right. and then there'd be about a month's span of time for people to get them and get them back. Yes. Um, and then just on page 22, it talks about the city um, is going to be provided with raw data in Excel format. Um, and again, Cindy, you didn't have this experience because you weren't here at the time. Mm -hmm. um, is it one of the consultants that we have utilized in an initial survey that was provided? Mm -hmm. They were not as clear as to what format that needed to be provided in. Mm -hmm. So my only question for you and for our um, city manager is whether or not that's specific enough because obviously the depth of an Excel format, it can come in, in a lot of different um, avenues. So just a suggestion would be that we might want to be more specific as to what that Excel format might be. Sure. Um, 
most importantly, so that when the data is provided, you and your team and, and, and our city manager, et cetera, can manipulate that data from the perspective of anal an analyzing it. Right. And I know in the past we've had an experience where we didn't get it in the format that we needed. Right. So up to you guys in terms of whether or not you think that's specific enough. My thought was it may, we might benefit from making it a bit more specific. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Bailey and uh, Cindy. All right, is there any more questions on this? Mr. Mayor, if I could real quick, I just want to address Councilmember Zoner Bailey had asked me about this contract and you know, not all the time I will review everything that one of my attorneys has looked at. Obviously we don't want to duplicate costs on this. I have reviewed it while we've been talking uh, to the extent that it captures all the elements. This is clearly out of my office. Um, it's it's got uh, yeah it's like, a robot, it's like a robot draft. Got it yeah, it's, it's got all of the uh, it's got all of the terms. Uh, it's simple, got the insurance. The words out, it's, the yeah, all the one words. Yeah, no. and it might one thing that might be helpful just on some of our cover sheets if it just is clear that it's been reviewed because sometimes we have that and that's we, we get accustomed to I think looking for that and if we don't see it we think we should have something. Thank helpful. you, Ken, for doing Thank that. You. Okay, uh, if I don't have any more questions, I'm going to ask for a motion to second. I'd like to make a motion to approve a contract between the City of Milton, Georgia and the Shapiro Group, Inc. for the Parks and Recreation Needs Assessment and Related Work, Agenda Item 10-1046. Send a second motion. All right. Got a motion by Councilmember Hewitt, second by Councilmember Lusk. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Cast you now. Okay. City Clerk, please call the next item. Approval of a resolution to attach a section called Supplemental Plans to the Partial Plan Update of the City of Milton, 2008 to 2028 Comprehensive Plan. This is agenda item number 10-1047, presented by Len Tully, Community Development Director. Mayor Council, I'm going to interject in this one and, and uh, give us a couple of different options to proceed with this tonight. Um, one is we can uh, start to work through it and hammer out exactly what uh, supplemental plans should be attached to this resolution. We've indicated that there's five in here. Um, I have some information that shows that that number might truly be seven, eight, nine, somewhere up in there. Um, we could sit here and hammer it out tonight and potentially adopt a resolution that incorporates everything that it needs to. Or my preference and my recommendation to you tonight in the spirit of uh, using our time wisely um, would be to allow staff to uh, clean up some of that stuff and bring this ordinance back forward uh, to you. I allowed it to be called on the agenda because if, in fact, you do allow us to defer it, I do want to defer it to a date certain. Um, and that date certain would be February 17th, the next regularly scheduled meeting of the council. Um, again, if you want to proceed with it tonight, um, we're prepared to do that. It's probably going to take us a little bit of time to get through it if you want to do that tonight. Or we could handle this potentially very quickly um, 14 days from now. No harm in doing, uh, in doing that. No. Would this be discussed at next week's uh, work session? Well, we certainly could. Um, I can tell you that was one of my staff reports. Next week's uh, work session is rather lengthy. It already has eight items on it. Um, and it started today by having nine, and we've taken one off of it. So we could if you want to. Um, I think probably our meeting of the 17th, even if it takes us some time on the 17th, I think we're going to be pretty tapped out for time next Monday. Um, my preference would be let us let us uh, do a bit of cleanup on it, and we'll bring it back on the 17th, and it should be a fairly straightforward process. Okay, Alan. Um, just for my, um, just so I can figure out what it is that we're talking about, are we talking about things like perhaps the maintaining uh, or keeping Northwest Fulton rural documents and some of those documents that we've traditionally seen and carried forward over the years? Is that what we're talking about? Um, I think the answer to your question is yes. I don't have the list in front of me. I could, Lynn probably has it in front of her if she'll nod or say yes, if, yes. If, if that's thinking correctly. In fact, the things that are currently listed include uh, Crabapple Crossroads Plan, Birmingham Crossroads Plan and Development Standards, the Maintaining Rural Character in Northwest Fulton County, Georgia, uh, the Milton Trails Plan, and the Milton Transportation Plan. Those are what's current, what are currently on the list. Uh, we're finding that there may be some more, so okay. we'd like to look into that. Karen? Um, if y'all get a list together, 
beforehand? Can you just get it out to us and that way we can try to email you with any questions we might have and that way we can try to minimize the time maybe on the 17th? That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just, uh, yes, sir, thank you. Uh, obviously, I've already provided some input. Um, hopefully, that's self explanatory. Um, and I think the two things would be just that some of them need to be date certain. So we just need to correct certain dates. And then there are some documents that um, obviously you guys are going to be looking to potentially add. Um, just to bottom line to make sure that when we have a supplement, it is inclusive of everything. So, and bear with that. I'd be happy to put forward a motion if anybody else has Okay, what, uh, and basically, um, staff had just just uh, recommend that we move this forward to the 17th. A motion to defer to February 17th. Defer to the 17th. Okay. Council Member Bailey, you want to make a motion? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I put forward a motion to defer agenda item number 10-1047, which is the approval of a resolution to attach a section called Supplemental Plans to the Partial Plan Update of the City of Milton 2008-2028 Comprehensive Plan, and that to be deferred to a date certain of Wednesday, February 17th, 2010. Second. Okay, I've got a motion by Councilmember Bailey, a second by Councilmember Tart. <clears throat> Is there any other uh, uh, council discussion on this? Hearing none, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, yeah. With that, we'll uh, move on to Mayor and Council reports. Um, the only thing I really want to report on tonight, and I see uh, Ms. Ann Coggins slid in the back and uh, is here tonight. I want to thank her uh, with our Milton <coughs> Disabilities uh, Committee. And uh, Chris and I were fortunate to attend a seminar last week uh, from Real Communities and uh, working together with them to uh, take Milton beyond the cutting edge of having an inclusive community. and. Uh, that's accessible, accessible to all and uh, encourages all to participate. So I want to thank Ann for that and uh, thanks for being here. And uh, open it up to any council members that might have something they want to report on. Okay. Then I'll move on to uh, staff reports. Mr. Lagerblum. Excellent. Let me get a couple of housekeeping things out of the way, and then we have a couple of staff reports that are going to take just a couple of extra minutes. Um, I've already mentioned that we have a long work session next week, um, and that uh, is just, I looked and tried to figure out things that we could wait until March with. It's just not one of those opportunities. There's a lot that needs to be done. Um, so I just ask for you to plan for a late night next Monday. I'm sorry, but uh, for the bit of time we get out of here early tonight, we're going to have it here with each other next Monday. Um, we got word today, and, and uh, if any of you are available, I'd like you to add this to your calendar. Uh, there is a new business op opening in Milton. Uh, the business is UC Fitness. It's at 631 North Main Street. They believe they were in the city of Alpharetta and had been coordinating their ribbon cutting ceremony with the city of Alpharetta. And uh, Alpharetta's Community Development Department today figured out that, in fact, they were not in Milton. Uh, we got the call long after this thing has been planned. Um, we're just now hearing about it, but a ribbon cutting this Thursday, 10.30 in the morning. Um, they would welcome any of your participation if you're able to attend. 631 North Main. UC Fitness. It's right south of One Word Parkway. Um, actually, this one, yeah, this one should be down across from Ingalls, so the old Ingalls. Um, John Deere's. Somewhere in that neighborhood. It's an odd number, so it should be on that east side of the road. Um, also, ribbon cutting tomorrow at 4 o'clock at Phillips uh, for any of you that are going to plan on attending um, that one. I just got a couple of raised eyebrows. Um, we can send uh, that information uh, to you as well. Um, that, uh, and then we have three more. And let me tell you what they're going to be, and then we'll maybe pick one of them off. We want to spend a little bit of time tonight discussing the special events plan for 2010 in the city of Milton. Um, to talk about the events that we plan on having, to get your feedback, to share a couple of ideas with you, and to ask for um, your support with the special events in Milton. Cindy's going to lead that discussion. Um, we do have an item that has been delivered to the city from Forsyth County, and it relates to a, we've got a copy uh, for each of you here, it relates to a rezoning matter that is before Forsyth County. 
Um, I just want to read into the record and then provide you with a copy and then let you uh, ask any questions if you have them. Um, we've been notified that this letter is to serve as official notice that Slade Holdings Incorporated sub submitted a request to amend conditions 11 and 13 placed on ZA number 2189 by the Board of Commissioners on May 11, 1998. The applicant requests that conditions 11 and 13 be amended to read as follows. The subject property may be used as a recycling collection facility and shall not be utilized for a junkyard, scrap metal yard, dumping, incineration, automobile wrecking yard, or any, any other use that may cause odor, fumes, dust, uh, smoke, or pollutants. Oh, well, 13, except for facilities utilized for the collection of recyclables from the public, dumpsters shall be screened from public view. There is a public hearing which will be held on Thursday, February 4th, 2010 at 5 p.m. in the uh, Commissioner's Meeting Room number 222nd floor of the Forsyth County Administration Building. If you have any questions, please feel free to call. Um, we've provided you with a copy of the application for this modification as well as a GIS map that was produced by our GIS staff here in the City of Milton indicating where this rezoning request is in relation to a City of Milton property. Um, this is more just to put you on notice that either individually or collectively as a body, if you have input into this particular zoning case, um, when the public hearing would be. I think I have done my duty by making the notification. Is there anything else that needs to happen with respect to this, other than just to provide you with a copy of what we received? No, sure. Okay. Sure. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, so just looking at this map, in other words, it is immediately adjacent to the city of Milton. Is that the right? That is That's correct. The, the red parcel is in Milton. The blue parcel is in Forsyth County. And I'm assuming that's why they had to notify us, because it's immediately adjacent to. Uh, and my question would be, and obviously this is not a landfill, but at least historically my understanding is that for things such as a landfill, if you're within, <clears throat> excuse me, either a certain distance by footage and or half a mile or a mile, there's a certain requirement that one jurisdiction would notify the other. Um, again, this is the first time that we've seen this, not knowing offhand, you know, what the size of parcel is, et cetera. Uh, most importantly, not knowing whether or not our constituents collectively would have concern with it. Um, obviously, you know, recycling is a positive thing, but I don't, I just wonder for our city attorney and our city staff whether or not there's some additional things that we would want to do just to ensure that we've been as transparent with our community as we might need to be, um, even though we individually may or may not have any comments. I don't know that we here tonight could tell you that our constituents may or may not have. So with that, I just wonder what would be some other steps that we would want to do. We may not even have time to pursue that. I'm not sure. Right. And can I just clarify something? The, as you're talking about the red parcel is <clears throat> that's a milk parcel, but it's not. It really doesn't have anything to do with that parcel, other than the fact that parcel is adjacent. Right. So there's no no activity on that parcel or. Uh, actually, uh, community development staff today did visit the parcel, did speak with the property owner. Um, the property owner uses that parcel for agricultural purposes. Um, he's a local restaurateur and grows his own produce for the restaurant. And so um, he didn't seem to have any concern or issue with that uh, property being developed behind him. So. Ken, do you want to comment on that? As well? First of all, just for purposes of disclosure on the record, I do represent Forsyth County as well. Um, you know, what, what you could do, I don't think, Councilman Brazano Bailey, that the, that the normal requirements about uh, that, that apply to landfills adjacent to, to other governmental borders apply here. Um, but, but, you know, to the extent that community development staff would, would want to uh, secure the planning file from Forsyth County, that may be one way to become much more. Um, you know, educated about what exactly is, is going on up there, that would be certainly up to them. We could get that done immediately. Uh, you know, to the extent that it's informational, uh, informational concern, you could put something up on your website if you wanted to facilitate citizen comment. Again, that's totally up for you to you. I will say that though, I was talking to the city manager before we got here. The reason this was sent was just, I think, trying to be a good neighbor. The notion, I think, that there had previously been a township uh, developed on the borders of Forsyth County that came in for zoning. And I think there had been some concern that the board perhaps didn't give uh, Milton enough advance notice of that so you all could come and, and make your voices heard on it. I think that was the concern. And that's why this letter was sent. In, in short of reading it here, because I don't want to take your time, um, I suspect you're probably relatively familiar with it. Can you just mention at a high level whether or not the current property in Forsyth, how it's currently zoned? 
Uh, to the extent this is going to be used as a recycling center, I would say it's probably zoned either M1 or M2. Right. Um, and I'm looking at this, it's on in industrial waste. That's what I'm assuming. It's either M1 or M2, then probably M2. I believe it's M2. It's M2, mm -hmm. which is our most intense industrial right. use in Forsyth. And all this is doing is changing the condition uh, to allow, obviously, this is not done for no reason. There's going to be a recycling center there. Right. Can I ask a question? Proceed, attorney, uh, you know, just uh, what if scenario, what, what if our citizens or us as a city council or city, you know, what effect could we have on, uh, on this application? Is it nothing more than attending a meeting just as though, you know, our citizens could attend as just as, South County citizen could show, could attend and that's right they could attend and and and, and certainly voice their concerns um, and I'm sure they would be well received certainly and, and if any of the you know officials wanted to attend they would be well received as well but other than just that sort of a soft influence okay. that's, that's I just wanted and, and mayor if I may um, make the things that immediately come to mind obviously if it's already zoned M2 it has certain industrial uses and without having the list under Forsyth County, what those and I can imagine what those are. Um, without going through that list, just a thought would be if we were to be able to look at the staff's analysis from Forsyth, obviously through our own Lynn Tully, and maybe just evaluate what the buffers are. Um, think about those things that we would potentially be interested in securing for our own citizens. Um, I would suggest that the individual that we may have spoken to, um, having just been contacted today, may or may not have those top of mind. So if we were to represent that individual as their counsel, those would be the sorts of things that I think this body would at least talk about. And, so and, I, I, just, will, and I will say, just for, for, for Lynn's purposes, uh, the, the zoning code is online. Going to the performance tables under M2 would take about 20 seconds. Right. And that would also include the buffers, <laughs> side yard setbacks, et cetera. Uh, could I, you know, based on, on this discussion, could I, I recommend, and if the council's okay and staff's okay, that maybe... Um, if Lynn could get a, a copy of everything and then just kind of give us a recap, um, you know, what affects the adjacent property owners and how it differs, if it does, from our requirements okay. and the issues. And if nothing else, you can just give us a quick email update on we, that. And then if something jumps out, mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody could surely talk to We've that looked at the proposed and site plan, and there's no buffer encroachment. Um, there's an undisturbed 25 foot buffer that. It continues to exist adjoining the piece of property that's in Milton. So we have looked at the site plan before we even brought it forward tonight, and there, there's no, there's no uh, buffer encroachment proposed. And that's very helpful. So those yeah. are the sorts of things that I, obviously, that you already know that would just be helpful. Um, and then if there would be anything that uh, Ms. Tully or, or uh, any other members of our staff would say, gee, in looking at it, this is what you would recommend, and or you think it meets all of those requirements to best protect those um, adjacent properties. And at least that way, I think that we as a body can say that we've looked at it um, with due course and we've provided them the input if necessary. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Okay. Mayor, I've got one more before we talk about special events. Sure. Councilmember Lusty, you're getting ready to ask a question. Uh, just one further question. I may have missed the discussion. Is there a buffer required in M2 in Forsyth County? Uh, let me see. It shows a 25 foot undisturbed. I would imagine that you wouldn't put an undisturbed unless they were required to, so. Uh, well, I'm That's familiar with the site, and I don't believe there's an existing buffer there. Not to say that uh, they couldn't create one. Yes, sir. I um, believe. What kind of uh, question, general question, what kind of influence uh, would the residents or the city of Milton have in uh, addressing any buffer or any screening uh, issue with that parcel? Uh, I believe that particularly the adjoining property owner, uh, if there are any concerns that he or she may have, um, would weigh quite heavily uh, with Forsyth County. But would you agree that goes back to what Ken was, what I'd ask about, you know, that's really the avenue is yes. that property owner along with, you know, anybody that's interested in the city. Well, they're going to they're gonna be bound by the performance standards and the, and the buffers that are on in the code anyway, and then anything over and above that is going to be based upon specific concerns by either adjacent property owners or if Milton had concerns, I can guarantee you that the Board of Commissioners of Forsyth County would look at that and say, you know, this is legitimate. Um, the minimum buffer, I used my 20 seconds to did you, did you, Okay, so, all right. The minimum buffer along the side or rear yard abutting a commercial or office district is 25 feet. The minimum buffer alongside 
or a rear yard abutting a residential A1, A2, or AG residential is 75 feet. So in theory, they'd be they meet the 75 because they're adjacent to AG1. Gone below a bunch of the yeah. We'll have to look at that. I believe that they've only shown 50 feet. And so again, it, it may As be that Forsyth has not fully identified all the variances that they might need. Um, again, Unless there were variances with the original zoning. So. Right. So we, we probably don't have enough information to comment other than to it's say. It's possible. That's a it, good point. Mm -hmm. it, but it does impact, obviously, our residents. So I appreciate the opportunity for us to be able to get some more information. Yeah. You know that? Yes, ma'am. support that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to bring you up to uh, speed on where we stand with the direction that you, as a council, have provided Ken and I um, to talk. Uh, let's talk briefly about cell phone tower applications. Um, Based on the meetings that we had, we did uh, seek out um, qualified individuals or firms or companies that could act on the city's behalf in assisting in providing some analysis with respect to these applications that are in. Um, Ken and I uh, met with and have talked to two uh, different uh, firms, and what we are finding at this point is that if the city wishes to use um, professional consulting staff to assist with that, analysis, um, we're finding a cost not to exceed $4,000 per tower. Um, what I'm looking for tonight is not necessarily direction on which particular firm to use because I think Ken and I have a good uh, and, and a mutual understanding as to who I, be, who I believe can serve us well um, for these three applications that are in. What I'm really looking for is just kind of a, a statement and I will find a way to um, uh, fund these three particular studies. Um, or analysis, it will just be something that we need to then appropriate funds for at mid-year. So what I'm looking for is just whether or not a cost not to exceed $12,000 is something in your estimation that is worth city expense at this point for a thorough analysis of, of these particular towers. I'd just like to kind of yeah go, go down the council. I know uh, kind of got the impression that uh, the council supports this, but I want to kind of go down the just get a head nod if uh, the direction of if, if you're okay with the uh, spending the money uh, moving forward looking at that. So, uh, I think council member Shu, um, Tor. I would, but I had a comment or a question. Okay. Uh, um, but let me just. Julie. Yes, and a similar okay. comment. Karen. Okay. So, go ahead, Phil. Um, would you contemplate that any investigation? <laughs> or any study by an outside consultant would address, you know, future um, site applications. I notice on uh, this particular provider on his propagation maps that he's identified other uh, future sites. Out there. Yes, and answer to you, the, the direct answer to your question is yes. We're really dealing with a two-part process here. Um, obviously, Ken and I explored what um, types of resources we could bring to our immediate need and our immediate circumstance and then what kind of resources we could bring to a longer term um, lo longer term process as it relates to the new telecommunications ordinance that we just passed as a council or you all passed as a council at the end of last year. Um, so yes, what I'm looking for tonight is really what is addressing the immediate. Um, step two, which we have uh, asked all those questions and, and uh, Kind of have that queued up to be the the second step. Um, our clock is ticking on these first applications, so we really need to move first with those. And have I characterized it good, Ken? You have. You okay. have. And, and to, to, to Council Member Lusk, one thing particularly is that, uh, for, for instance, just some immediate feedback we got was that with even with respect to the new telecommunications ordinance, they are recommending that we, for instance, increase the amount of money that the applicant has to tender to the city. As you can see, it's more than the two thousand dollars that we have put in there. So that's automatic. You you can expect this is going to be coming back to you at some point with some recommendations after a field test, if you will. And that's going to be great. And that's what the city manager is talking about: is the immediate problem is going to be addressed. I don't mean to characterize it as a problem. The immediate issue is going to be addressed, and then the ordinance will be looked at at some point. I, I, thank you, sir. I, I think just a subset to that is that when one, either firm A or firm B does some analysis, will the data that they collect, though, also apply to some of these other 
potential applications that could, whether it's from this applicant or from another. Um, and of course, subsequently also we'll need some modifications to our ordinance as we've already discussed, not only on cost, but I think some other things we identified would be helpful. Um, so just the data collection itself, looking at those one, two, and three, is it possible that for the 4,000 per site, that some of the data collected would also then be able to be parlayed into some analysis that would cover all of Milton, which I, I think in part is what, what Bill was asking. I think to the extent that's possible, and I say that in, in, in that way because each of the applications is different, and, the, and any future application will be different. And there's, there's, uh, if there's similarities between one of these applications and a future application, then the answer to your question is probably yes. Um, but what, what we've learned through this process um, is that each of these applications is really independent and kind of stands on its own. Um, so is it, is it fair to say to the extent that we could use this information in additional applications? We will, but I don't know that we will all of a sudden have results from these analysis and all of a sudden we have now an analysis for the whole city. Right. And it may just be that some of their core analysis would apply regardless in terms of coverage from other providers. So maybe we just simply ask them if they can at least take some of that global data and put it into a format that we can then use as right. long as it's timely. Obviously, some of it's going to be site-specific. Some of it may also apply across carriers. And, and, but I think that some of, the, some of the scientific and technological data, the background data, for instance, what options are available, mm -hmm. what, what sorts of alternative Absolutely. solutions are available are yes. going to be universal. Correct. It's, but Chris is also right, though, that the, the technical data as far as coverage areas and, and gaps and things like that will be location specific. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Cindy if you'll hang with us for just a couple more minutes to talk about special events. Okay. I'm just going to, I've prepared a written report that I'll just read through real quick and then I'll be happy to entertain any discussion or questions. Um, since beginning with the City of Milton, I've been reviewing and familiarizing myself with all the Milton special events. I've held numerous meetings and discussions with various citizens and staff. Uh, I'll present this update on each event based on calendar order. Uh, our first event is our annual Memorial Day ceremony on Monday, May 31st. This will be the third year for the event. We have already begun collecting information and we will meet in February to begin finalizing the planning. Ideas we are exploring for this year include many of the same components that have been part of the ceremony previously, but also looking at a new location, an aerial performance, and an essay contest involving the two Milton Middle Schools. The next event on the calendar would be the July 4th Citizens Parade. July 4th falls on Sunday this year, and so a new date would need to be explored. Uh, my recommendation is to forego the event, at least for this year, so that we can evaluate whether or not to continue the event in the future. A parade is a wonderful community event, but also works well when held in conjunction with another event or on a day that is not already heavily planned like a holiday such as July 4th. I have an idea for combining a parade with the Milton Roundup. The next event on the calendar is the Crabapple Arts and Antiques Festival. This will be held on Saturday, October 2nd. I've met with Sally Rich Cobb and offered to be a resource for her. Uh, and the Crabapple Community Association. The Merchants Association is actually in process of changing its name and acquiring a 501c3 status. The next event is the Milton Roundup. Uh, I am proposing a date of Saturday, October 16th. Um, the reason for this date is trying to avoid being too close to the Crabapple Arts and Antiques Festival and considering weather, potential weather, uh, with it being too hot or too cold uh, in the fall. We are exploring moving the event back to Birmingham United Methodist Church. I hope to go out and tour the site soon. I have also met with Principal Tesh at Milton High School, and he is not opposed to hosting it there again with a few stipulations. I think the mayor's run is a great lead-in for the event and hope that continues. Also, I think a parade would be a great addition to the event. If the mayor's run could be held around 8 a.m. and the parade at 10 a.m., then everyone could head over for the roundup from noon to around 7. We may even be able to add an evening event to the celebration as well. Again, these are all just preliminary ideas. I hope to begin meeting with the Milton Roundup Committee in early March. The next two events would be the Christmas tree lighting and Christmas and crab apple. I would like to explore combining these two events into the same day, which would be the first Saturday of December each year, December 4th this year. 
We could hold Christmas and crab apple in the late afternoon and then hold the Christmas tree lighting that evening. Combining the two events on the same day should simplify planning and conserve finances. Citizens would only need to set aside one day on their calendar instead of two around the busy Christmas season. I'm also looking into hosting an outdoor movie event this summer through Be At The Movies with B98.5 FM. I've already asked to have us considered for a date. I do need to identify and confirm a location that could potentially accommodate around 1,500 people. I'm open to suggestions for a location, and I'd be happy to discuss and address any of your questions at this time. Can I jump in real quick before we get to the questions? And, and the reason we're bringing this forward, um, Cindy and I talked this um, this week as we looked at the calendar and said, okay, let's let's uh, figure out what works, what doesn't work, how do we make things better um, this year. The one that, that we struggled with and we just, we slept on it, we struggled, we slept on it, we struggled, um, was the 4th of July parade. Um, I can tell you that it has been an okay event, I guess, as I classify events in Milton, it's been okay. I understand there's a lot of competition on the 4th of July. You know, 50 some thousand people converge upon Buckhead to run 6.2 miles down Peachtree Road. Um, there's uh, other events around the area. There's evening events and fireworks displays and all that good stuff. Uh, and, and last year, I guess I'll be very frank with you, I wasn't satisfied with the result of the 4th of July parade. It, it was, um, it, it just didn't accomplish what I think we were hoping to accomplish. When we sat and looked at it on the calendar this year, we said, okay, and this year we're even further compounded with the fact that it's not likely we're going to have a 4th of July parade on the 4th of July if we wanted to have a parade on a Sunday morning. That just doesn't, that just doesn't work. We're not going to interrupt church services for a parade. So, you know, we're, we're dealing with an event that, that two years has had limited response, and I don't know if the limited response is a lack of interest or if it's the people are otherwise committed other places because they've run the peach tree for 22 years in a row and they're not going to miss the 23rd I don't know um, but I really want us to I wanted to get that discussion to you quick the, first, the last thing I want to do is go out here and say okay we need less community events I think we need more um, but I don't know that a 4th of July parade this year on the 3rd of July make sense or not so you know I'll, I'll say that just in the spirit of upfront disclosure our spirit is not to cancel events our spirit is to have good events um, and sometimes you're dealt a set of cards that just don't lend for a good event um, the recommendation or the the vision maybe for this year is that we really beef up the roundup and make that just a day-long good event in in Milton and maybe we're better served by having a parade on in, in October um, you know, the one thing we were missing from the 4th of July parade last year was a band. Well, bands are hard to get in the summer because the schools aren't in session. Um, you know, some of those problems alleviate themselves by pushing a parade into when school is actually in session. I, I almost think we could have a better event if we back away from it and say, okay, maybe the 3rd of July parade this year is not a good idea. Let's look at other options. So um, I say all that to say we've already kicked off meeting about Memorial Day, and that's going to be a heck of an event this year. But... We just want to bring you kind of a, an update early in the year so that nothing jumps out at you in, in June and you say, what, what are these people thinking? If, if you're really committed to a 4th of July parade, we will have the best 4th of July parade on the 3rd of July we know how to do. Um, but I'm going to stop talking and get your feedback. That's what we came for. <laughs> Does anybody have any feedback on that? For staff? Julie? Um, one thought would be, not so much event specific one thank you because i think giving thought to this is awesome and I, and I think as a result we'll end up with better events um, is it something that you're contemplating including as a survey question um, i know it may not be parks and rec specific mm -hmm. but it would seem to me that that's a reasonable question that we would want to include on a survey yes and i've already that was not a specific question on the draft of questions, right. um, but I have already discussed that with the Shapiro group right. and added that as a notation that because when we meet and discuss sure. that we add all special. seven of us may have a different perspective, but I bet 12,000 households yeah. probably are going to have a yeah. different perspective than yeah. What type of events would citizens right. like to participate in? Would they like right. to bring their children out to? Mm -hmm. um, would they, they set aside time list for those, it? Maybe they yeah. order them or something. So yeah. one, terrific. Um, it, the other thing I would suggest, just as a thought, when you ask the question outdoor at the movies, I would ask if we couldn't potentially look to our parkland. I mean, we've got land that's a, a passive opportunity. 
um, currently where people can come and, and park. Mm -hmm. And so I, in theory, depending on what condition it's in, um, you know, in the summer, as long as it's being mowed, et cetera, that may be an option. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the other would be some of the other venues that we've utilized, whether that be uh, Birmingham United Methodist Church, simply because they've got green space. Mm -hmm. But to me, an outdoor movie seems to be associated with the green space as opposed mm -hmm. to in an asphalt parking lot. Of course, a parking lot's always another option. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just not as um, commensurate with park and, and that sort of activity. So those would be two suggestions or considerations. You just have to make sure they come with generated power that's quiet enough you can still hear the movie. That's one of the Correct. issues yeah, exactly. we're dealing with with the outdoor movie. Sure. We've, we have explored some of those yeah. ideas. Sure. Absolutely. So you asked, so that would just be my initial yes, response. Yes, thank you. And my other would be, I would ask if we could, whether it's this year, maybe next year, if we at least could start to think about, I know we've thought about it, I know that the Milton Grove's Green Committee has thought about it, others of us may have um, as well, but I surely would promote also an event or something um, that focuses on us as a green community, whether that be, of course, Earth Day. We've got Arbor Day, we've got Earth Day. Different places around the country um, celebrate those at different times. I mean, oftentimes Arbor Day is actually in February, but then Earth Week is in April. Um, but if we could look to combine that somehow as a city mm -hmm. to help to promote it, it'll, I'm sure, be also part of what we start to pursue as a um, official mm -hmm. city of trees, et cetera. But if we, when we look at events, think mm -hmm. about how can we also incorporate those things that have to do with us becoming an increasingly green community, mm -hmm. um, I think would be helpful. Again, may or may not have to be a huge event mm -hmm. this year, but if we can start to acknowledge that as something that we want to move towards, um, I'd appreciate that. And I, I have already started discussions with Mark Law um, about an Arbor Day event or a Beautification Day mm -hmm. event. Um, we did hold a Beautification event, a day event in Snellville, where local clubs, groups, church groups could right. come out, participate, help us plant flowers, help us do some minor maintenance. Exactly. Uh, and we've done parks. components of that. I mean, yes. some of us have obviously been involved in some Arbor Day activities. So to acknowledge an official day or an official Right, celebration more consistent yeah uh, and then again I just would recommend maybe um, also and I'm sure and as you continue to get uh, entrenched um, is, is to speak with the Milton Grove's Green Committee because they've obviously got some thoughts and ideas as well in terms of how we might be able to combine some of those things so sure just thank you sure. 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 and I would also like to try to make sure we have on our calendar the community service day especially if we can get it approved for everybody to get a free ticket to Disney World mm -hmm. I think that we probably would have a pretty good turnout. No one goes to Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'd like to try to go ahead and get that on the calendar whenever it can be so that we can. No, they've never responded to me. I might have to take a field trip down there and see if I can convince them. <laughs> if you come back with ears, I'll know where you But, if, you know, if we could get that to work out, that would be kind of a neat. You, you probably get a lot of people show up to actually do some work if uh, they got a free ticket to Disney World. Mm -hmm. <laughs> great. Thank you. Uh, if if you have any comments, feedback, you want to send them by email, that's great. Uh, we're going to keep trudging ahead. Obviously, we don't have to make ultimate decisions out towards October yet, but some of these that are coming up, we want to make sure we uh, have some pretty phenomenal stuff this year. Take it up a notch if we can. Thanks, Mary. That's what I have. Okay. And uh, our city clerk, please sign the next item. Next item is executive session added by motion and vote. The purpose of the session is to discuss potential land acquisition. We have a uh, motion and a second to adjourn into executive session to discuss per, uh, possible land acquisition. Sure, Mayor, I'll put motion, a motion forward to uh, adjourn into an executive session specifically for the purpose of discussing land acquisition. I'll second that. Motion by Council Member Bailey, second by Council <coughs> Member Thurman. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous.
Well, that's what I mean. Great darn close. That's right. Okay, I'd like to reconvene the meeting. Do I have a motion and a second that we reconvene? I move so that we reconvene the regular meeting. Second. Uh, That's fine. You're all right with that? That's okay. fine. Okay. Uh, motion by Council Member Law, second by Council Member Thurman that we re reconvene. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that passes unanimous with the exception of uh, Council Member Hewitt's not here and obviously Council Member. The glory was not here. Uh, I have a motion that we adjourn. I move to adjourn the regular council meeting. Second. I have a motion by council member Ross, second by council member Tart that we adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. 715.